me live from Tokyo is Stephen Nagy, who is the professor at Tokyo's International Christian University, where he teaches and researches international relations and Indo-Pacific regional matters. Hello and welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Um, uh, first off, this is, this, uh, this is a significant uh, trilateral meeting that is going to be taking place between the Philippines, the US and uh, Japan. Just how significant is this? Well, this coming Friday, this is the first time we've seen a trilateral meeting at the leadership level in Washington that's going to specifically focus on cooperation between Manila, Washington and Tokyo in terms of the South China Sea and trying to provide some uh, red lines or at least some a pushback against Chinese assertive behavior. The South China Sea, in particular the tensions between the Philippines and China, is really seen as a spark point that could cascade into a regional conflict that would disrupt $5.5 trillion of trade that goes through the South China Sea. Okay, so before we get to the trilateral, we have um, the, the discussions today between uh, Mr. Biden and uh, Mr. Kishida. What will they be focusing on? They'll, one, focus on strengthening and deepening the U.S.-Japan alliance. And this means uh, perhaps establishing a joint command or deepening the, co the coordination between the top military officials in the United States and the self-defense officials in, in Japan. Uh, second, they're going to talk about how to enhance deterrence across the Taiwan Strait to preserve peace and stability. And again, how they can broaden cooperation, not just bilaterally, um, but I think importantly with regional partners such as the Philippines or Australia or India to again provide that peace and stability that's needed for trade, for stability in the region and for regional growth. Well, we've had the U.S. ambassador to Japan speaking. We've also had the Jap Japanese ambassador uh, to the U.S. speaking. And each and every time they have brought up China. And the U.S. ambassador has specifically said that the U.S. strategy is to isolate China. How will this be regarded by China watching all of this? Well, China will look at this as a traditional Cold War mindset. This is the expressions that it continues to use to describe how the United States works with allies and partners around the world. Um, but in reality, I think that the United States is uh, thinking about how to uh, work with allies and partners within the region to shape China's behavior so it follows rules that have been established by the global community in the post-World War II period. So we're going to hear criticism, which is typical, but I think the criticism is not really founded on any uh, real um, evidence. Uh, the United States welcomed uh, China into the WTO. Uh, Japan continues to have three point, uh, 30, uh, $390 billion of bilateral trade. These countries are by uh, not isolating China, rather they're trying to send a message that work with us, work within the rules that's been established, and we can have a prosperous and peaceful and stable relationship. Well, when we talk about relationships, um, there is comment that the U.S.-Japanese relationship may be strained because of the, the U.S. steel deal. But just very quickly, I'd like to touch on AUKUS and uh, talk of a, a new partner. What we're potentially going to see is Japan joined what's called the second pillar of the AUKUS agreement that focuses on emerging technologies such as AI, quantum computing, cybersecurity, and hypersonics. These are seen as the key technologies that are going to shape the relationship between governments and people, the future economy, and how the global economy is going to be moving, moving forward. Japan wants to be at the table, not on the menu in terms of the regulations and where these technologies goes. And this is why I think uh, Japan is working with the United States and the other AUKUS partners, such as the UK and Australia, to find a way to be part of this important agreement. Okay. Um, Stephen Aki, Professor Stephen Aki, thank you very much indeed.